Okay, ladies and gentlemen, he is here in the building, Taggart himself. Let's bring him up here. Let's give him a really big round of applause and a big Scottish cheer for John Ashton. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Good. How are you, John? I should say welcome back to Scotland because you're no stranger to these parts, albeit a little while ago, wasn't it? No, it's been a while. I, I performed at the Arts Festival many, many years ago. I don't want to tell you how many, but uh, yeah, I, I performed at the Arts Festival for six weeks and uh, loved it here. It's a beautiful city. It's great. Stage was your first love as well, wasn't it? Would you go back to that at any point? Yes, yes. I, uh, I was doing theater back then. Actually, we toured uh, Germany, uh, then went to uh, Cambridge and London, then here, and then Greenock after here. So, uh, And I got my degree in theater at the uh, University of Southern California, and uh, it, uh, that was my first love, doing theater. But, you know, you move on. You moved I, loved, I loved doing films, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you did. I mean, we will all remember you, of course, from, from many films, and we'll come on to some of the others, but also, of course, Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2. Just talk to me about how that gig came about and what was it about the story and the script that attracted you to that, that job? Well, actually, it, it came about through theatre, actually. Uh, I did a play called True West, uh, written by Sam Shepard with uh, Ed Harris. Ed Harris and I did the play. Uh, we both won Drama Critics Awards for it. And uh, about two years after the play, a uh, casting director called me in and said, uh, well, I'm casting this film called Beverly Hills Cop, uh, and you're really not right for anything in this, John, but uh, <laughs> I love, love seeing you do True West with Ed Harris, and I'm a big fan, and I just wanted to meet you. So I said, well, okay, fine, you know, uh, nice to meet you too. And a couple of weeks later, they called me in and I auditioned for it and we had about five different auditions because it changed. It was going to be Sylvester Stallone for a while. Uh, and then Eddie Murphy did it. And uh, then they paired Judge and I up at an audition and they liked uh, the way we worked together and uh, we got the role. So. Do you feel that sometimes working with another actor that you just get that chemistry straight away? What is it? How does that feel? Well, uh, I had auditioned a couple of times and I had only auditioned one scene uh, and I didn't read the whole screenplay. I, I had no idea what the movie was about. And uh, when they paired Judge and I up, uh, he came to me and said, well, what do you think of the script? And I said, I don't know, I haven't read it. <laughs> So he said, oh my God, we gotta, we gotta do this together. And I said, oh, we'll just wing it and have a good time. So we went in and ad-libbed and did a bunch of stuff and they, they loved what we did and our chemistry and put us together and the rest is history. We had Judge up here yesterday yes. and he was telling us about, there was a lot of ad-libbing in the scenes between the two of you. In yeah, the Scott. original script, uh, Taggart and Rosewood uh, were pretty minor characters, uh, but Marty Brest was a wonderful director, and I worked with him on Midnight Run also. Um, but Marty just loved what Judge and I were doing, and there'd be some scenes that there was no dialogue in the script, and then Marty would just say, well, you guys make something up. And so we just ad-libbed a bunch of stuff. <laughs> and Like the scene in the car, uh, all it said in the script was, uh, Taggart and Rosewood wait in the car. So we shot it a couple times, drinking coffee and looking around and doing, and then all of a sudden Marty went, okay, we got that now, you guys make something up. And Judge happened to be reading a, a magazine in between takes, and he said, wow, did you notice there, by the time you're 50 years old, there's 12 pounds of undigested meat in your system? And 
I said, why are you telling me this? Why, uh, why do I have any interest in that? Well, you eat a lot of meat, you know. So, I mean, that was all ad lib stuff that we just did, you know. Is, was that statistic real then? Because I've trotted that out to so many people over the last 30 years. Uh, I don't know if it, that's, I don't know if it's real or not, but. <laughs> and then all that climbing over the wall and all that stuff, that wasn't in the script. Marty just said, okay, you guys have a hard time getting over the wall. And Judge and I did all that stuff with the feet. And the, so that was all ad lib stuff too. So a, a lot of it was. And of course, Eddie loves to ad lib too. So we had to work with him off of that. So uh, it was a lot of fun. We had a good time. Tell me how hard it was to keep a straight face during some of the scenes, especially with Eddie Murphy. I mean, Judge has told me about putting his hands in his pockets and pinching himself to try and stop himself from laughing. Well, yeah. Um, when he did that whole super cops number and these guys are super cops and you know, I, well, you can see me doing that and I was just, you know, I was, uh, yeah, he, he's, Eddie's a funny guy. So, you know, he just made all that up on the spot, so. Uh, it it yeah. must have been a tremendous energy on the set. I like to see films and TV shows where you can just tell that the cast and crew are having an absolute blast. Yeah. And that seems like one of those films, is that right? Yeah, yeah, it was. We, we, had a good, we really had a good time doing it, you know, and just having fun. And uh, in the second one, when I had to go into the pool, I did that about 10 times and uh, almost hit my head on the side of the pool a couple of times. But uh, yeah, it was, it was just a lot of fun. We all, we all got along great and had fun. And we just, when they rolled the cameras, we just winged it and had a good time. I mean, we know that comedy is in Eddie Murphy's bones, but it seems to be in your bones and in, in Judge's bones as well. I mean, you were in an episode of Police Squad, I seem to remember. With Police Squad, yeah, yeah, that was with Leslie Nielsen. Yeah, that was a long time ago. What, what was he like working with? Because he, he just seems guy. like such a, a comedy genius as an actor. Yeah, he's a very, got that dry sense of humor, very funny. And, and the same with uh, Midnight Run, with, you know, Charles Grodin's got that dry, you know, low-key sense of humor and you know uh, and I, I i really think the 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 kind of nice thing about beverly hills cop was it was originally written as a serious movie and mickey rourke was going to do it sylvester stallone was going to do it uh and stallone was going to make it rambo blows up beverly hills or something i don't know but uh, but it was really written as a serious film. And then when Eddie took it, it became a comedy. But, but we still tried to play it straight, you know, which we made the situation funny and not, you know, we didn't try to be funny. We just played, played it for real, you know. I, I'm going to ask you guys, I assume that a couple of you are going to have some questions. Um, so just be thinking about any questions just while asking one more, because I know something they will all want to know is, Will there be a Beverly Hills Cop 4? I know you're probably sick of answering this question. And would you want to be in it? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Eddie, uh, actually, Eddie announced last week that that's his next project. So hopefully we're going to do a fourth one. And I didn't do the third one, uh, but they want to bring me back for the fourth one, I hope. So. Fantastic. Has anybody out there got some questions? I would love to hear from the audience. If not, I can carry on because I can talk to him all day. But if any of you have any questions, you put your hands up and I'll come over. Um, talk to me about Midnight Run, because I know people might see you as, as more well-known for the Beverly Hills Cop movies, right. but you must be tremendously proud of, of Midnight Run, working with Robert De Niro on such a, a fantastic film. It was, it was great fun. Uh, yeah, Bob was great to work with, and Chuck, and we, we all, and we were, we were actually on the road for six months. Uh, we actually started shooting in New York and worked our way across the country. And, and so it was a long shoot. But uh, uh, the interesting thing about that is um, I was at a play where Joey Pantaleono was performing, who was a friend of mine. And at intermission, somebody came up to me and said, uh, an actor friend of mine said, well, you're going to do Midnight Run, aren't you? And I said, I don't know. I haven't read the script. So I, I found out Marty Brest, who directed Beverly Hills Cop, was directing that. And I called Marty and I said, Marty, shouldn't I be in this movie? And he said, oh, you'd be great, but you got to audition for it. 
And I said, why do I have to audition for you, Marty? <laughs> he said, well, it's not me, it's Bob. He wants, to inter he wants to audition everybody. He wants to be able to, and he's very smart. He wants to choose who he works with. So I went in and uh, did a bunch of ad-libbing with Bobby, and, and I found out later, I, I walked out, and he said, I want him. So uh, we got together, and, and Bob's got a great sense of humor. He really does, you know, and uh, so it was, that was a fun, and I really, I really wanted to do that type of character to get away from that Taggart image, you know. Even though I'm very honored that, that Taggart's a famous, famous guy and everything, uh, it's an honor when people call me Taggart, hey, Taggart on the street. But, you know, I, 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 I'm a character actor, and I kind of wanted to get away from that image for a while, and, and Marvin Dorfler was such a different character that uh, I had a lot of fun playing him. So. You know, round here, they're less likely to shout Taggart at you because Taggart was a, a cop show, a detective drama <laughs> yeah, uh, I know. based in Scotland as well. <laughs> so they're less likely to throw that one at you around here. <laughs> um, and you've got your own uh, sports radio show, I've seen, or you had... I you did had for a while, yeah. yeah. Because actually ESPN stands for Entertainment Sports Network. So I tried to do a show with another athlete to show the similarities between the two, the entertainment business and the sports business. So it, we, it lasted for a while and it was fun. Yeah, it's just, it's great to have that variety in, in your work. Since, yeah. since you first started acting, you have well, had such I, variety. Well, and I, I went to, when I was in high school, I went to broadcasting school and I had my own radio show in Ohio at one time. So, uh, so I was used to doing radio and things like that. So. I, I read a rather, uh, I went on IMDb, having a little look at, at the biography they put on there, and it seemed a little harsh. They described you as a burly, balding character actor. <laughs> Have you ever thought about suing the guys at IMDb? <laughs> that seems so harsh. Well, I guess I am burly and balding, I don't know. I, just, I think of myself a little different than that, but you know. <laughs> There's a lot more to you than that. There's I'm a lot sure. more to me than that, in, yeah. in Beverly Hills Cop 4, when it comes out, if it comes out, and they bring you back in. What would you like to see from Taggart? Would you like to see anything different? Would you like to see a bit more of what we all love of him from the first? Would you like to see his character have developed in any particular way? Well, you know, in the third one, I didn't do the third one for a number of reasons, but uh, they had mentioned that I retired and I was playing golf in Arizona, so obviously they're gonna have to take me out of retirement and, uh, Judge and I actually at one time were, uh, they were talking to us about doing a TV series together, so. Um, but no, I, I, the, um, I, I just think I have to extend the character a little more. I mean, obviously now he's older, probably he's retired. So I'll, you know, I'll have to come out of retirement to, Something drastic has got to happen for me to come out of retirement, you know, so. I don't know, I'm not a writer. I'd, I'll do whatever it is, tell me what to do, you know. <laughs> Fantastic. What, what would be the standout memory of those times on, on Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2 for you? What, what do you take from that era? Well, uh, it was just, it was just creatively a lot of fun to be able to go on the set and really not know what you're gonna do that day, you know? It was always something different and something new all the time. You never knew what you were gonna, that the, the first scene we shot and got to meet each other was uh, the strip joint scene in Beverly Hills Cop 1. That was the first scene we did together, you know, so. Uh, That's you know, a strange was, setting for your first meeting. Yeah, right? you know. Like, sat and looked at a bunch of beautiful girls for 12 hours, you know, so. <laughs> but it was just always exciting to know, not know what was gonna happen that day. Uh, I remember in the second one, uh, when I shoot Bridget Nielsen, when she's gonna shoot Eddie, uh, there was no dialogue. And I, it just said that I shot her and, you know, save Eddie and, so uh, Tony Scott came up to me and he said, you gotta think of a line, you gotta think of something to say. So I said, okay, let me think about it. And you know, after I shoot her, he wanted me to say something. So 
I was in a makeup trailer and Judge and I were talking. And, uh, you know, during the course of that movie, I was having problems with my wife and all that stuff anyway. So, <coughs> excuse me. So Judge said, why don't you say, women, you can't live with them, you can't live without them. So I said, that's too long, that's too long. I said, but that's, you're on the right track. So when we got to the set, I just, when after I shot her, I just said, women. And that was it. I let the rest of it uh, make, make up your own ending to that, you know. There were so many great moments in those movies. I think we're all really appreciative of your time here. You're going to be back up here with Judge Reinhold later on this afternoon, so please do come yeah. back for that. That's going to be very special. But for now, please put your hands together for John Ashton. Thank you. We'll see you uh, later on with Judge, I guess. Thank you for coming out.